Martha Gus and Lama's uh, Gold featuring Amina Harris. And then I was like, oh, we have this song because I was scrolling down. It says somebody bigger than you and I. And I was just thinking about, oh, man, I want to sing it because I was on Instagram li live yesterday and I sang that song to my followers. And, um, and so when I was like, oh, you, we have that song? And then he's like, yes, you're playing it right now. And then he started telling me what I'm playing. I'm like, why are you just sleep, man? Go back to sleep. Like, no, I'm telling you, we have the song. Well, what song are you talking about? I said, it's a Whitney Houston song. Yeah, we got Whitney Houston. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> okay. So I don't know if that's ever happened to you guys before. If you have a parent or somebody who is asleep and then they hear you and they wake up because they hear you saying something or doing something and then all of a sudden they start barking orders at you. If y'all can relate, man, hit me up and let me know. Because I'm starting to feel like I'm the only person right now. <laughs> But anyway, major shout out to uh, artist uh, Jack Frost. Um, he was on Instagram Live with his girlfriend the other day making jokes about um, uh, some uh, current situations. If you guys would like to follow him on Instagram, uh, he's a jfrost87. So check him out. But check out this song, High Roller, featuring Vinny T. Jack Frost with High Roller 
As you can see, ladies and gentlemen, this man is Mr. High Roller. He's got it going on. He's definitely got a great fashion sense. Let's change things up a little uh, for a little bit. We got uh, some more tracks by Studio and Tracy Cruz. Uh, this time by Studio, which I thought was uh, a different track, but <laughs> we'll get that on for you right now. Friend. Third time he's called. Just answer it. Hello. Yeah. Hey, What, you want to talk on air? Yes, we did, yeah. So our number for us is 628-444-3203. That's like our studio. You call like the, uh, the owner of the studio. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is the office, the office line. Yeah, I don't you know that, right? So yeah, call 628-444-3203, then you get to uh, the studio with us. But hey, we definitely appreciate your call, and yeah, your music is rocking though. That's why we wanted to talk to you over there. Alright, later. I don't call this number again. <laughs> Really? <laughs> hey there. Ooh, little baby J. That's 416. That's a cute name. Oh, he, must, he must have worked to the uh, website. website. That means he didn't listen to the show. <laughs> this time. Yeah, we try to call it, but I appreciate it doing that. Trying. So that means I gotta dig back into the Gmails. Is that Jimmy Merchant? Jimmy Merchant, are you watching? Oh my God, we have a caller right now, but don't leave, don't leave. Oh my god. Um, GRM Presents Podcast. Hi. How are you doing? Um, yeah, so you want to be on the air? Alright, so hold on one second, please. So, the white button. Hi, Jimmy Merchant. Yes, I can. We're getting ready to talk to another artist right now. Hey, while you're in here, I just want to say I love you so much, man. Mwah. Man, your music is, is part of, you know, it's just a part of my life and why I do what I do. Maybe one day you can call into this show. I love you so much. Thank you for watching. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm so happy. Don't leave. Don't leave. <laughs> Oh my god, man, I want to take a screenshot. I want to take a screenshot. No, I turned the phone off. Oh no. I'm so stupid. I put in the wrong password. Shoot. Wrong password. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> hey, what's up? <laughs> hey, there has been so much stuff going on, guys. Y'all don't even know what's going on behind the scenes right now. But we do have a caller on the air. Caller, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hey, and we can hear you. So that's always a good start. So uh, tell everybody, what's your name? My name is Danny Alpha. Okay. So, um, is your music, uh, are you the artist that we just played uh, about, uh, maybe about 10, 15 minutes ago? Yes, I am. Oh, cool, cool, cool. So, uh, we were talking about that track. So, for the people who don't know you, so where are you from? 
Um, I'm from Daytona Beach, Florida, but I'm originally from Nigeria. Wow, that's that's different. So, uh, uh, when did you come to uh, Florida? I moved to Florida in 2014 to 2014. Really? Yes. So, um, so tell us how did all of this happen? Um, like, uh, what made you come to the United States? Um, well, I've been going to school for the most part. I've been in flight school, um, learning how to fly planes, trying to get my commercial pilot license. And um, I, I always, like, been into music ever since I was in, like, high school. Um, was always in choir and church. And, uh, yeah, so music had always been a part of me. Oh, okay, okay. So, um, when did you first discover that you wanted to rap? Um... Honestly, after I listened to Notorious B.I.G.'s Juicy. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So yeah that was the moment for me. That was it. Uh, okay, okay. So, um, is would you say Notorious B.I.G. is one of your biggest influences? Yes, yes, most definitely. R.I.G. Christopher Wallace, too. Okay, okay. Uh, who are some other artists that inspire you? Um... Michael Jackson, most definitely. Um, Rock Kim. Um, Lil Wayne is another big influence. Um, Aretha Franklin. Um, yeah, those, those, those are some of my main influences. Okay, okay, well that's cool. So, um, the song, what was the name of the song we played? I believe it had a lot of, is it called Put Me In Coach or... Yes, that's what it's called. It's called Put Me In Coach, and I featured Rocky Fresh on it. Rocky Fresh. So how did you guys, uh, so how did uh, the collaboration with you and Rocky Fresh uh, come about? Well, honestly, I had seen that uh, he was doing features for a, a little bit, and uh, he's another artist who I actually listen to a lot when it comes to this generation of music. Him, Tory Lane, um, to name a few of them. Meek Mill and a couple of other guys, and mm -hmm. I seen he was like trying to revamp his um, album, um, you know, process before he dropped it, and uh, he kind of just shot out um, an email to send songs to, and he said if it was fire, yeah, he'll he'll put a verse on it. Oh. And, uh, you know. So uh, I sent my song to him. I hit up his manager and spoke to his manager too, and his manager kind of. Um, got back to me that same day, I believe, and said, yeah, Rocky will most definitely want to get on the song. He said it was fire, and Rocky will most definitely want to get on it. And so we handled some um, business behind the scene, and, uh, yeah, Rocky got on the song the next day and uh, finished it, um, I think, a day after when he started recording it, because I think his daughter had to be taken to the hospital, so, and then... I got the song back within two days, and that was how that Wow. So, um, how did you come up with the concept of your song? Um, honestly, I just, um, sometimes the songs just really come to me in terms of just, um, freestyling. That's something I do a lot. I just freestyle sometimes. I listen to a beat. If I like how it sounds, I start freestyling to it, and then I just see what really catches my attention as far as what the beat is trying to say to me, or like what the beat is kind of sounding like, and then I kind of just put a hook to it first, then I come up with the rest of the stuff. But I freestyle first, and then I, you know, come up with the main part of the song after that. And yeah, sometimes it's the beat, and then sometimes it's, you know, some things that are really going on, like what's really trendy. Could be like basketball, it could be finals, it could be, um, you know, something going on in politics, it could be something going on in the world in terms of like a war or something, and then I just try to come up with something. Okay, okay. Um, I think uh, a lot of people in the studio were um, um, really thinking about like your, um, your metaphors, like you must really like to play basketball. Is that a hobby of yours or? <laughs> Honestly, it's a hobby. It's a hobby. Although I'm not too good at it, but, you know, I'm decent. I'm decent. I can, I can make it. Some people around for their money, so I'm okay with it. 
Okay. <laughs> so I think Mr. Black has some questions for you as well. Yeah, I would just like oh, okay, to say no I was uh, very impressed with the song, your cadence, your your delivery, the beat with the beat was great. The overall yes, production of the song was fabulous. Yes, uh, I would just like to know: Do you have any other songs in the works, or any yes. other songs complete? Yes, sir. I got. I have like three more songs out there. I have another one called Shenanigans under um, my state. My, my state name, Danny Alpha. It's on every major platform. I got a, another one too called Potus. It's a little presidential song, kind of like about. Um, I try to like put myself in Donald Trump's shoes. Not mm -hmm. really something anybody wants to do, but I kind of just did it from an artistic point of view. Mm -hmm to just like make a song about like the White House and how the president him, himself feels and what kind of goes on in his head, you know, mm -hmm. being that he's in the White House and he's having to deal with all these problems. Okay, so and we actually have that track. Do you want us to get into it? Yes, most definitely. Please do. Okay, so we'll get into that song and we'll be right back. And it's not gonna hang him up, is it? I just turned it down. I was like, yeah, whatever you want. Hi, thank you for. <laughs> this is so cool. This is so cool. Thanks for chilling with me. I really appreciate it. <laughs> You got me something. I was like, oh my god. And then I messed up the. <laughs> Man, thank you for chilling. Do you have an Instagram page? Because I'm live on Instagram right now, too, on my Instagram. Oh, you do? I'm glad you're enjoying the show. I'm glad. You say you like this guy? Well, you got some more questions for him? Okay, okay, okay. Do you like uh, New Orleans jazz? Um, it's called GRM Presents Podcast on FCCFreeRadio.com, Studio 2B. So yeah, so I do like the birthday drama hour because, you know, like, get my own show is expensive, so. <laughs> but yeah, GRM Presents Podcast on FCCFreeRadio.com. And then, uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Uh, I don't want to get no germs on my headphone. Hey, so that song is pretty fire. Hey, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no problem, no problem. So, uh, wow, so that song was definitely a, a creative concept. You were able to put yourself in the position of uh, Mr. Donald J. Trump, our president. 
Um, Made up thing to do, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was very creative. Um, are you working on any music videos for this song? Um, yes, I am. I plan to shoot a music video for that song. Um, I'm currently actually trying to push a couple of my demos to a few labels to get um, a team behind me because I'm really um, just at that point where I'm trying to branch off to like build a team or get a team behind me. So like. I will be able to do like so much more with like the songs because I really do put a lot of um, um, time and uh, creativity and a lot of effort into the songs and I would like rather like have a solid team behind me um, to really put all of these um, songs like in a position where when people do see them with like the videos and stuff they can really understand what is really going on so that's what I'm that's where I'm at now. Okay, okay, okay. That's good. You know, you should totally come out to the GRM Award. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, I believe... Yeah, yeah, you should totally submit to the GRM Awards. Hey, you never know. Maybe you don't need a record label at all. Maybe all you need is a couple fans here in California. And right, then you can right, take I'll it take on it. overall yourself. Okay. <laughs> I'm taking your word for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um... Definitely. Is are, are there some other tracks that uh, you have coming out? Um. Yes, I have another one. Um. Called Shenanigans, which is out right now. Oh yeah, Shenanigans. Um, you mentioned that. And then I, I have one more. Also, the most recent of the songs I dropped is called Nintendo. Um, oh, Nintendo. Yeah, it's called Nintendo. I like you guys to play that one too. If you if you can, I'll send it to you. And if, if you can, I'd love for you to play it too, cause. I've kind of started seeing a number of artists like jacking my little swag out there. <laughs> but, uh, little Nintendo songs and doing little Nintendo videos. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to put down names because at the end of the day, it's all inspiration. I believe, you know, mm -hmm. when an artist does that, it means you're doing something right. At least. So I don't, I don't take no harm towards it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I believe Mr. Black had uh, some questions as well. He had to step out his back. He was really okay. excited. He said you were spinning some hot fire. Hey. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Like I said, uh, I definitely did your your, your voice, um, your, your cadence is definitely right. unique, and I believe it, it stands apart. That if I would play ten artists, and if you would be included, and no one would told me you were in the set, I would be able to pick out your song. That's awesome. Voice. That's awesome coming from you, sir. <laughs> I appreciate that, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So thank you for calling in. Um, before you get out of here, though, um, do you have a website or um, any social media handles? Yes. Um, my Instagram is Alpha Neiman, A L P H A N E I M A N, and my Twitter is. Boy Daniel, D B O I D A N I E L. But on my Instagram, which is Alpha Neiman, I drop all the um, links to all my songs. Every now and then I switch them up, but everything you get updated is like everything um, on my Instagram. And please follow me, follow Alpha Neiman on Instagram. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for calling in. Uh, you definitely got some hot tracks. We'll get them on deck uh, on the show for next week as well. Thank you so much, Ms. I. You are the greatest. Thank you, Fubu. You are the greatest. Um, <laughs> shout out to GRM. Wow. And, uh, I look forward to working with y'all. See you. Oh, wow. And, and, and Keep up the good work, brother. Yeah, guys, if you guys uh, are looking for him, he's also on my Instagram page as well. So if you can't find him, just look uh, for his name through my uh, friends as well. So thank you once again. Thank you. All right. Um, so, yeah, so we got some other um, songs that I, I was uh, looking to play. Um, <laughs> I There's this one particular song I think we got right up on the queue that we're going to get into. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> I want to... I, I took a dance class, a, a partner dance class, but I... I, we didn't get to dance to all the cool stuff. They had us doing the 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 samba and stuff like that. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> oh. 
Oh yes, favorite number on it counts is you. I'm so glad it's you I want. I'm so glad you want me too. Baby, 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 baby. to request a song? Oh yeah, would you like to hear a song? Would you like to hear a song? Let us know what you want to hear. Here, talk to him. It's fil filming you. I'm going to talk to you. Yes. Okay, well, thank you for, for joining us. You know, not often do we get such a oh. esteemed and highly regarded <laughs> musician, <laughs> world class, legendary musician, you know, watching us through the live feed. So we definitely appreciate you taking the time to watch us and check us out. I actually talk about you all the time. And extremely positive things. So, you know, we do appreciate it. Thank you. So, any song you would like us to play, definitely let us know and we'll get it on, on for you. You're my favorite number. All that counts is you. I'm so glad it's you I want. I'm so glad you want me to. <laughs> ooh, ah, ooh, ah. See how smooth I put that in next? I put that in pretty quick though. <laughs> I put that in quick, in like a half a second. That's really hard to do, by the way. It's kind of hard to do that and then without it stopping and stuff. Why do fools fall in love? Why do they fall in love? Is a losing game? Nothing. And you can call in. Uh, the, I haven't said it because I was still talking to you. Uh, our number is 628-444-3203 if you want to call in. I know you're probably busy, but that's our call-in number. We do this uh, every Tuesday, 5 to 8 p.m. We usually have a guest come in around uh, 6.30 and they do an interview 6.30 to 8 p.m. So if you want to call in this week or next week, let me know. Or just call in. It would be good to just, you know, say hello. <laughs> Y'all sing. <laughs> I was about to sing the other song. Okay. Why did I fall in the name is Jimmy Merchant. So really, really awesome guy. So just letting everybody know that. So we've been playing a lot of songs by um, independent artists uh, today. Um, one of which is Tracy Cruz, who I mentioned earlier has a new honey line, which is totally awesome. I mean, hey, a singer, if you're a singer, you should definitely come out with something that uh, benefits singers, right? Right. right, Mr. Black, Mr. Black, did you have anything to say? I'd like to say that Tracy Cruz is a wonderful, wonderful singer and artist. Yeah. And uh, definitely check out her honey line as well as buy her music because she is the best. Yeah, so um, we actually have some more music by her. Uh, this track is called Joyful Rain. 
her music is always has a smooth touch to it. So I hope you enjoy this track. Hey, what's going on? Thank you for joining. Yeah, we played this song a couple weeks ago, huh? <laughs> Let's see. Baby, baby. Mickey Lyman and the Teenagers. Um, the one where he says, The portable on my shoulder. And my baby by my side. Uh, were you in that song? Not music for. Shoulder. I forgot. Oh yeah, it's called Portable on My Shoulder. Is that? Were you on that song, or was that uh, like? Oh, Juvenile Delinquent. Let's listen to that one. I can't spell none of those words. I'm trying to type it in. I'm trying to... Oh, I knew what I was talking about. I'm not a juvenile delinquent. You want me to play that song? Or am I embarrassing you? I don't want to embarrass you. <laughs> oh no! you're here i'm on the cover of jamsphere magazine just uh, in case you in case hey man you know i should, probably should have been talking about that on here i probably should have mentioned that <laughs> i didn't that's because my song played by mistake earlier earlier um i would i had to leave and i came back and then when i sat down it was playing a different song and then a different song started playing and then when it came back i was getting ready to cut and then it started playing one of my songs, so it was just a filler. <laughs> and so that's I, I probably didn't talk about myself. Actually, I probably should have went back And that is Tracy Cruz with Joyful Rain. Hope you enjoyed it. That's an awesome video as well. She's definitely a cool artist. Once again, check out her her honey line. That's so unique. That's so special. I've never met an artist who had their own honey line. I mean, that's pretty dope. What do you think, Mr. Black? Oh, I definitely have to second that and agree that it is dope. It's a dope concept and a dope, interesting way to do merchandising with the honey. So yeah, definitely, definitely some cool to add to your to your product line as an artist. Yeah. So, um. I wonder, like, if she ever comes on the show, like, I definitely would ask her, you know, what made her want to come out with her own honey line. I mean, 
there's probably lots of business reasons like why you were like it could have just been like oh my uncle owns a honey farm but who knows why but it's definitely a good concept shout out to tracy cruz um this is one of my tracks called lovely you can buy it off Bandcamp. see this one sounds clearer because um Mike? no this oh you don't see what i'm doing I don't have the rich. <laughs> I'm gonna play um, juvenile delinquent in a in a few minutes. Falling asleep. Falling asleep. <laughs> you can't sleep and sing at the same time. My Instagram people are like, man, y'all ain't paying attention to us no more. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Alea calls in though. Hey, thank you. If you want to call in and request a song, our number is 628 Oh no. He was typing and I didn't even see it. Yes, you can call. It's 628 444 3203. I actually didn't see any of your comments till just now. You're an 80 year old juvenile delinquent? Oh my goodness. I didn't even see all of these messages. Sometimes Facebook has it frozen. You can call in just at any time. I, I guess you don't have to let me know. You can just call 628-444-3203. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Eyes, and that was my latest fan exclusive, Lovely, which you can get off eyes.bandcamp.com. That's E-Y-E-Z.bandcamp.com. And while I'm talking about myself, I just want to let everyone out there know I am on the current cover of Jamspur Magazine. So shout out and a big thank you to Rick Jammers um, and Jamspur Magazine and also to Mr. Black who is in the studio falling asleep. Um, and also Dr. Letitia Wright, thank you for all your help in helping me um, get to the point where I can be on the cover of a magazine. I'm so grateful to have you guys in my life and in my team. Thank you so much. On behalf of everyone she just named, you are very welcome, and we, we, we definitely love helping you. We definitely love seeing you achieve all of these new goals and all reach all these new levels. We definitely, definitely appreciate you know watching it happen happen before us. So continue, continue having great success. Okay, okay. So if anyone would like to call in, the number is six two eight. 444-3203. Once again, that number is 628-444-3203. Um, we have some other music that I want to get into at the moment called I'm Not a Juvenile Delinquent by the Teenagers. I'm not a juvenile delinquent. No, 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 no. Hey, I was saying the number too fast. I couldn't see. No, 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 I'm not a juvenile Yeah. 
You're so sweet, thank you. I look cute right there. I look, my hair looks better when I hold it up like this. You're so sweet, Alea. Thank you. I want to send you a like. We played two of your tracks earlier. GRM Presents Podcast. It's called GRM Presents Podcast. I think this song's gonna go over in about 15 seconds. So yeah. Eyes. Mhm. Mm oh, uh, we're live. Um, hello everybody. Uh, we're on air. Um, we have a special caller. Um, uh, someone uh, by the name of Jimmy Merchant just called who. You just heard in that song called Juvenile Delinquent. Caller, can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Hi. Yes, we can hear you fine now. So, everyone, this is Jimmy Merchant. Am I clear? Yes, we can hear you. Good. Um, this is an amazing time for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, simply because uh, we're talking about 64 years later um, being uh, one of the original members of Frankie Lyman and the Teenagers, um, Wild Fools Fall in Love came out um, in 1956, uh, January 1st somewhere around that time, uh, we actually recorded Wild Fools Fall in Love in December, just like a, a month before. So um, Frankie was about 12 and we were 15, the four of us, 15, 15. And um, we, in uh, 1955, at that moment in time, were already formed six months with Frankie. You know, we were ninth graders at the time, and Frankie was uh, in the seventh grade. Uh, and we got discovered, and uh, there's a lot before that, but I just want to uh, basically focus on that moment, that recording moment in time, uh, the first week in January of 1955. Um, management called us, you know, they were they, uh, we, we were excited about soon to record. We had auditions, and they called our parents and said to have the boys come down after school on a Friday night. Wow. On a Friday evening after school. So we got there about maybe 7, 8 o'clock. And, uh, <laughs> and then, you know, it was, it was um, uh, Rama Records, which was actually going to be G records. Uh, the Cleptones were, um, you know, Halo Girl of Mine, I think was that hit. 
Um, hey, little girl, oh, do you really mean me? Yeah. That song. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they had recorded just maybe a month. They had already recorded maybe a month. And the Cleptones were going to be the first, they were the first uh, group on G Records. And we were going to be the second one. But we were recording, we were called down that Friday, <laughs> on Friday evening, on Friday afternoon after school, our parents told us, they want you to, they want to record you this, you guys got to go. So we all met down <laughs> in uh, downtown New York City on 42nd Street. There was, uh, well, the office was on, on 42nd Street between Broadway and 8th Avenue, but the studio was on 46th Street, I think it was, between 8th and Broadway. And there we were waiting in line <laughs> to, um, to get into the studio. And we got into the studio somewhere around maybe 9, 30, 10 o'clock. And by 1, 15, roughly, uh, Saturday morning, after maybe 26 takes, uh, <laughs> Why the Food Falling Love was completed. <laughs> and they sent us home. I'm trying. I'm trying to fix my phone. Let me know if you hear me. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put okay. the loudspeaker on. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear us? Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Well, I, I can barely hear you guys. Oh, you can barely hear. Let me turn our volume up. Can you hear us now? Pardon? Can you hear me now? Uh, I don't know why I cannot hear my phone. Oh. Um, Maybe, I don't know, uh, you, it's really dense. I can't Oh, no. You. Does this help uh, any when I sit closer to the mic? <laughs> yes, yeah, it sounds a lot better. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, I'll keep, I'll keep my mouth super close to this microphone. <laughs> well, you know, I'm, I'm very excited to, 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 you know, to come across young people like this look at that's exciting. Oh, my music is something I did 64 years ago. What makes you so excited about our Frankie Lyman and the Teenage Frank Rose? I gotta be honest with you. It's your music. Like, as soon as, first of all, I saw the, the movie uh, Why Do Fools Fall in Love? I lived across the street from the movie theater. Uh, and uh, I I literally went to that theater all the time. I, 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 uh, I saw that movie about five or six times. I, I, I cried through it and, and I'm starting to tear up right now. But it, it's honestly your music. As soon as I just heard your music, I, I knew. And then, I mean, I spent most of my life in music. And although I may have grown up with your music, I didn't recognize like the name or anything. But as soon as I heard the music, I was like, this is the songs. These are the songs that inspire me. I, I I recognize them, um, and everybody will always say, oh, you can sing goody, goody, why don't you sing goody, goody, you know what I mean? And um, and honestly, at where I got my piano lessons, I was talking about why do fools fall in love, and literally, um, <laughs> he says, I have that, I think I have that. I was like, please go look, go look, go look. And he literally had the last copy, like, it, is, it has, like, 1955, like, on it. And he literally had it. Now, he didn't charge me the 50 cents that was on, printed on the copy. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I still got it for a fair price. Wait a minute. You, 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 you're a teenager, right? Uh, when I bought them, yes, yeah. But how old are you now? <laughs> well. Yeah, okay, I, I, you don't have to. Yeah. But you look very young. And of course, you know, you, you're talking about when you became involved with the music. It was many years later after the music had come out. We came out before you were born, obviously. Yeah. And um, so you said for 50 Cent you were able to purchase what? The song, the record? Was it the record? No, no, no. The sheet music. It wasn't for, it still the had. Music. Okay. Yeah, it still had 50 Cent on there, but he charged wow. me. Three twenty-five. <laughs> like I don't remember how much he charged me, but I didn't have the money, and I asked him to please hold on to it. <laughs> he was like, "Okay, well." <laughs> so, In right? yes, Mr. Fiore, he his uh, music store just closed a couple of uh, like last year, like maybe a year and a half ago. Um, I used to. We were at 
Um, in Oakland, California, actually, he's okay, yeah Italian. Um, and he moved there in actually before the '40s. I think he moved there in the '30s. So he's had that music store a long time. Um, but yeah, like it's it's just your music. Uh, I don't know if it, the doo wop. Um, I think I'm inspired a lot by the doo wop, but also I so much of the business. Uh, you know. It, your story is so important because it is a blueprint, you know, so you guys have the music, you have the talent, but you guys did something a little bit different, whether you guys knew it or not at the time that we emulate to, to this day, you know what I mean? Like the blueprint of um, how things were done. And it's so crazy because I saw you on YouTube um, last year and you were saying some things. I was like, man, I was so happy that like I actually got to hear it from you. So um, I guess for the uh, listeners out there who probably haven't seen some of your interviews or been following you, like what were some uh, things in the industry that you experienced that you didn't understand being a teenager coming into the business, like some of the things that happened? The main thing that uh, here I am, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm age, age, mm-hmm. and um, the, the, when, when you go back to, when, when I go back uh, to that period of time, I had no idea what, um, where I was going to be today, of course not, because I was, you know, 15, 16, and here I am, uh, 80 years old, but the, the deal is, I, I came to understand through the years when I got maybe in my uh, 40s and started looking back and then 50s, and I, I realized that when Frankie Lyman, when we came out of Frankie Lyman and Kings, when we hit in January of 1956, at that moment in time, music was being recorded by adults for adults. Mm-hmm. And why the food form of exploding on the scene that, like, and this is a funny little part of it, I go back to school because remember, we recorded it and it came out the first week in January, when you go back to school after the Christmas and New Year holidays, you go back to school in January 1st, 2nd, first day or second day of the year, and I'm changing classes in high school, and this little white chick is singing, <laughs> you know, we didn't know the record had came out yet. Oh, wow. We didn't know it was, know it was already out. And, 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 and there I'm changing classes. And a girl was going to my class, uh, a math class. It wasn't math. I forget the other. I forget the name of the math class, but it was all about mathematics. And 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 and, and I said, we're on the same class. Uh, where did you hear that? And she said, What do you mean where did you hear that? It's all over the place. It's on every radio station. I said, Okay. What's the name of the group? There's five black, there's five white girls called the teenagers. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh-huh. And I said, what? Wow. And she said, so, what now, coming back to the first comment I made with regard to what we did. Mm-hmm. Are you there? Can yes, you? I'm here. Um... So when I got later on in life, in the 40s, you know, 50s, and really started to look at the music, you know, by now, you know, I was, uh, you know, I had, uh, uh, the group had separated in a year and a half. We were only together one year and a half, from 19, January 56 to mid-57. We went to England, we were there for three months, we had gone to Panama, we were there for 10 days, we had done the Apollo Theater, by June of 1957, they separated the group. This is a pitiful part of the story because what the, the, the stupidity of it all was that they wanted to make Frankie a solo artist. 
not really realizing that his, his, his youthful voice will be going to be forever, A, mm -hmm. and B, they separated the group at the very height of our career. Mm -hmm. And at that point in time, a year and a half later, we had established something that I call the youth movement in music. We were the beginners of the youth movement in music from January 56th, like you said, through to today. Yeah. And look at the top artists today. Bruno Mars. Look him up and see him singing what? Why are we yep. so <laughs> Beyonce. She got started with the little girls group. There were no little kids or teenagers groups. Big time. All little time. Or Frank and I mean, and there were a few groups out, but we hit it hard. We hit it so hard. We changed the music scenario where from adults recording music for adults to kids and teenagers going into the studio and recording music for kids and teenagers by kids. The industry has not changed. It, it, it went through the Motown period. Remember the Jacksons? Yeah. You know, and there was groups, many groups before the Jacksons. You know, and then of course the Boys to Men and Backstreet Boys. I mean, there was the you know Frankie Lyman and Andrew Teenagers at the beginning of all of that. Yeah. And the, you know the the problem, not to be negative, mm -hmm. that. I have with it, and it, it might be my fault because I need to really get the book out. I've been working on the book to tell the story. But the problem is that the music industry is not recognizing um, the 64th anniversary of Wide Who's Going Well as they should. And I'm trying to get that out there. Mm -hmm. But but you know how things are. You know, you keep working on it. You know, keep praying about it. I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm a minister too, and I, I love the Lord and God is in charge. <laughs> God is the if God if God will do it when He feels like right, the time is right mm -hmm. for the true recognition of of what Frankie Lyon and and the teenagers did with this one song, Why the Blues Fall in Love, and many others, of course, Why the Blues is the Biggie. And when it's time, God will bring it to where it should be in terms of its recognition, because basically, well, for me, as one of the original members of Frankie Lyman and the teenagers, um, I mm -hmm. began with a dream. So the, the so for me, when I when I implement the spiritual aspect of it, which God is behind all things, He's a creator. He's the guy who is above and uh, created all things. So He knows what's going on. He knew what was going on then. He knew going to be happening. He knew where I would be today. He knows where we would all, he knows about where we would all end up. But for me, now, it, I was defying God to begin with a dream. So my father wanted me to be a baseball player, so I'm, you know, I'm living in the Bronx, and I said, I'm going to get on the baseball team and satisfy my dad. Yeah. <laughs> I was a vocal group already. I was nine, ten years old, and I was already following people uh, singing on the corner. And I wanted wow. to sing, and 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 um, 11, around 11, I got on the baseball team in Yankee. Uh, my father wanted me to be Yankee player because he took me to the Yankee Stadium, born and raised in the Bronx. And so I get on a baseball team, uh, a local baseball team to satisfy my father. And it turned out that the coach of the baseball team, of that baseball team, was a vocal group singer. So, you know, Here's, you know, the, the story is, is that, you know, you never know that, that that a dream that you had as a youngster, whatever that is, you might want to be a doctor, you might, be a, you might want to be a lawyer or a basketball player, and that dream is to stick with the dream. Because God is behind everything, he, he will cause that dream to become some kind of reality in whatever field that you are going to have to call the vocation. Vocation is basically the kind of work that you do and 
and it's based on the calling. I mean, that somebody's calling. So the dream is really the the the, the bottom line to this particular member of Frank Lyman and the teenagers. So my book would be focused on telling the true story of Frankie Lyman and the teenagers for kids and older folks and young people, but young people in particular because we are all were a teen I was part of a teenager group. And so to let kids know not to let go of their dream. I'm an example of what a dream can do. Wow. Make that Wow, yes, yes, yes. Um, so uh, when you were growing up, when you were 10 years old uh, singing, who, who were you, uh, who were some of the singers that you were emulating or some of the songs that you were singing or practicing? Wow. There, there, was, uh, there was a, a group called the Orioles. Mm-hmm. There was a group called the Chords. Mm-hmm. There was a group called Hawk Tones. I might have been maybe more like 12 or 13. Um, uh, if there, were, there were two or three groups that came out around 51, 52, you know, um, that was actually the beginning of something that became doo Yeah. And living in the Bronx, there were two, there were a, a few groups in that area that I was following around with my buddy who I started, you know, started a little vocal group with somewhere around 12 or 13 years old because um, when my mom relocated from the Bronx and uh, to, uh, to to Manhattan, another borough of New York City, I was, uh, you know, I was upset that my mom was relocating from the area where I was, you know, doing you know, trying to trying to trying to do my own vocal group thing. <laughs> and when she relocated, I said, Ma, you, you know, who are you going to be moving? I said, So when she relocated from the Bronx, cross town to um Man Upper Upper Washington Heights in Manhattan, which is a bus ride across town, a twenty minute bus ride, in my new school, four members that was going to be part of Frankie Long and the teenagers mm. were in that school. So when my mom left the Bronx, she relocates with 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 her children because her and dad wasn't doing so well. Mm-hmm. And so the, the new school that I get transferred to, the other four members that's going to be Frankie Long and the teenagers were in that school. I was the missing one. Wow. You see, you see yes. what a dream can do? Yes. So all things begin somewhere, you know, in, in, in seed form and grow into an experience. So, you know, don't let go of your dream. Yeah. You know, your dream might take you in certain areas. It might take you in another location. It might take you in another job. It might take you in another field. But don't let go of whatever that dream is. You know, yeah. Baseball player, doctor, lawyer, whatever. So... I just wanted to sing and, and be a singer, and then, bang, uh, my mom relocates, go to a new neighborhood, in that neighborhood, uh, not in that school, the other four boys that were going to be friends with Lama, the teenagers, one of the, the, somebody that lived in the neighborhood, mm-hmm. um, uh, 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 discovered us and took us downtown, another person lived in the neighborhood, gave us some love letters, out of which mm-hmm. the food on the love was written. I mean, you know, God caused all things to work together for good for the purpose of you letting the world know that God is in charge. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Yes. So, um, before you got the love letters, um, I yeah. I heard on YouTube there is a, like some songs that you guys were working on that you guys were singing. Um, I know you just briefly went through um, some of them, but just to like put the puzzle pieces together, what were some of the songs you were singing before? Well, uh, mm-hmm. okay, um, I, I had already uh, put together the Be Mine, mm. and I Want You to Be My Girl. <gasps> okay. And these gentlemen gave us these love letters. We were uh, we had come out uh, of, of the uh, the rainy weather and went into the 
and into the building, into the parks, into the parks building of one of the guys in the group now. It was just four of us at that time. Myself, Sherman Yarn, the real tall one, of the two Spanish fellows, Herman Santiago and Joe, and Joe McGraw. So it was just four at that time. Mm -hmm. Once again, myself, Sherman Yarn, the base, uh, Joe McGraw in Puerto Rico, and Herman Santiago of Puerto Rico. He was singing the lead, so it was just the bulls who were singing on the corners and singing in the park across the street from our school and, and walk around the block, you know, just uh, singing everything that was on the radio at the time, Earth Angel, you know, because that happened in 1955. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so we formed, we came together and, um, somewhere around the spring of 19, um, Earth Angel came out in 50. In September, we, so we formed in spring of '55. The four of us, and now we were in the hallway singing. Uh, we came out, came out of the rainy weather, and boom! This gentleman that lived in the building handed us some love letters. He told us, you know, you got to singing everything on the radio. <laughs> Take these love letters and write an original. So out of out of, out of these love letters, one of them came one of this one love. I took it home, um, you know. Came up with an idea for for um, a song, a slow song. If you look on the internet and you look up Jimmy Murphy singing "Why Did We Fall in Love," you'll see me singing the slow version of "Why Did We Fall in Love," and then go over to the fast version. Have you saw that? No, I haven't. Um, well, just just when you go into the internet, just put Jimmy Murphy singing "Why Did We Fall in Love," and you'll see me as an adult at that time, some years ago, not too long ago, back ten. Uh, maybe uh, eight, ten years ago, uh, at, at, at an award show, I think it was like uh, maybe a vocal group all fame show where a lot of vocal groups got inducted. And we were already inducted, they asked me to come there and sing. Mm -hmm. And you will see that version of why the groups fall in love. When you, um, when you message me, you can let me know how you like it. <laughs> <laughs> I will, I will. We'll definitely play it on the air. Um, Pardon? I, I will, we can definitely play it on the air. Um, yes, and if you want, um, message me your address and I'll send you my CD. It's on that CD as well. Okay. Right, and you got, uh, we're Facebook friends, right? Um, you're Facebook friends with Devon Black. I, I don't have, a, I have a Facebook fan page, but I don't have a, a Facebook regular page. You, you don't have no way in uh, going to my Facebook page, Jimmy Merchant. I think I just, can. I think I can figure something out. Yes. Yes, I can. I can. I, I think I found a, a ballad um, that I can um, play a little later. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I, I don't know if you're in the middle of something, but it's always good to hear, you know, about this, you know, um, the start of it all, as well as. Um, um, as well as a, your songwriting and how you put these songs together. Um, would you like to continue? Because uh, we can get into the song and then come right back. <laughs> well, whatever you want. What time do you go off? Oh, well, we go off at 8 o'clock. So we can we have, <laughs> we have a while. Oh, it's 8 o'clock here in California. I don't know. Are you on the East Coast? or? Yes, I'm in New York City. Oh, you're in New so York City? City? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> it, it, it's like it's a three hour difference mm -hmm. so it, what time is it there it's 7.24 p.m. so it's like 10.24 here okay is right. it too late for you or well, well no I mean mm -hmm. you know, um, <laughs> if, you, if you want me to stay on the phone with you a little longer yeah. I, can, I can give you another 10 minutes if it's okay with you yeah I wanted to get into your song and then uh and then come back, and, and then come back, but... Okay, go ahead. Okay. Okay, I was going to play uh, your Why Do Fools Fall In Love, the ballad version. Oh, you got it. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. So let's get into that right. Okay, sorry. This is a, a, an intro. Sorry, we're just picking it up off the internet, so we don't... Oh, okay. Yeah, so... Is this the first time you're listening to it? Yes. Oh wow, go ahead. So, so, uh, I think uh, they're doing an interview with you or 
So, but it's, it's, it's very short. You can play the whole thing. It's, it's a couple of. It's, it's not even a minute. Okay. Okay. So we'll get into it right now. That experience is happening right now. A oh, that's pretty. In a heart. That's a pretty. Lady. On the other side, I grew up around music. My father was listening to jazz. Count Basie. He was he was a lover of bebop. Charlie Parker, Dizzy Gillespie. My mom, she was a romantic. She loved Billie Holiday, Ella Fitzgerald, Billy X. Stein. Now here comes rock and roll coming up on the set. We got this letter. We want to write a ballad. It went like this. Why do birds sing? So gay and lovers await the break of day. Why do they fall in love? love? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Why? Does the rain fall from up above? Why do fools fall in love? Why do they fall? But you remember it like this. <laughs> <laughs> you know they got in trouble for that. Are you gonna ask him anything? I want to talk to him about his arrangement, and then you can ask him something. But I think he has to go. Hey, so we're back, everybody. That is so, 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 so beautiful. Uh, Mr. Merchant, can you hear me? 
Yes, I can. Were you able to see it while you were listening? Yes. <laughs> Oh I, I still see blonde ladies are, are still jumping up on the stage kissing you guys. <laughs> so you guys actually got in trouble for that. Is that true or is that just something that the movie said? Well, um, you know, what we had to be careful about was, you know, the whole the, the, the racial issue during that period of time in the South, when we went on tours in the South, we had to be careful about, you know, um, getting involved with white girls, even though we were not uh, trying to do anything sexually, unless we fell in love with a girl or something like that. But we, we, had, we, had, we were getting a lot of attention from girls all over the world, with whatever color they were. Oh, okay. Uh, I mean, the music that we were did, the music that we were doing and that we did and that we recorded, it, 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 it was such a huge attraction for girls and guys wanted to be like us and guys wanted to sing, you know, uh, groups that followed us, that came out after us, you know, like that groups that I mentioned. Uh, I can't think of, well, I mean, I got a list of them and, and, and I'm just... You know, I mean, you know, I can't think of all the names of them, but tons of, uh, uh, you know, uh, kid groups follow us. And, of course, girl groups, you know, the Chantels and, you know, mm -hmm. I'm talking about the office group, but which is more modern, more of today today. But, um, so, you know, a lot of, uh, a few lady groups started out. Richard Barrett, uh, the guy that discovered us, he discovered the Chantels that following year. Wow. And uh, they're from the Bronx. I'm from the Bronx, but uh, they, they were discovered by the same gentleman, Richard Barrett of the Valentine's, Lily Maybell. Lily Maybell, Little Lee Maybell was his big hit. And he was a great songwriter. He discovered a lot of people. And uh, he discovered, uh, uh, he got the little Anthony and the Imperial started. But we were the first group that we discovered. And then, of course, the Chantel and then. And, and then quite a few other uh, young young groups, and um, the, the 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 sad part of it though is that along with you know the the, the ripple period came about, um, which was based on the fact that the music industry during the early fifties, the mid fifties, when we came out. Um, People, uh, you know, parents didn't understand how the music industry worked. Yeah. My, you know, our parents knew nothing about the royalty system. Our royalties were to be distributed during that time. People that were behind the scenes, they had their minds set on earning and not really thinking about figuring out how to make sure that we kids got paid off because our parents didn't know any better. And once again, it was a, it was a period of time when, when yeah. uh, people didn't understand the, the, the legalities of the music business at that time. But that's one of the sad parts. The other sad part of the, of, of the teenagers, of course, frankly, being separated and uh, from the four of us to be made uh, you know, individual solo arts, and um, uh, he didn't last for a few years, and he died. You know, he died, in, you know, in his early twenties. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, you know, not you know, uh, a terrible way to to, to to pass away. And so, um, you know, what I'm doing now today is I want to uh, make sure that this history gets. It's established, but also to let young people know, once again, not to never give up, but at the same time, uh, let the world know that the youth movement in music was begun by Frankie Lyman and the teenagers, and I'm so blessed to be, you know, blessed by God to be one of the original members. Yeah. Here. There, there is one of the original members that's still around, that Herman Teddy out mm -hmm. in Florida. He lives in Florida? Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. You still and talk to him? Is, 
Pardon? You talked to him? Uh, I, I talked to him um, uh, not on a regular basis because um, he's not. Um, That's not me. Oh. <laughs> What's the matter? It's okay. It's okay. We understand. Uh, this is so awesome having. Um, an artist like Jimmy Merchant here. Um, I was, as I was listening to the original version of Why Do Fools Fall in Love, it was so beautiful. And and honestly, the way it sounds, it sounds like that's the way it was supposed to sound. Because if you listen to Why Do Fools Fall in Love and how uh, smooth um, the lyrics yeah. flow with the melody. Okay, that's real, but yeah, mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know, it, 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 this, this history is. Uh, I'm not cutting you off, am I? No, that's okay. Yeah. Uh, my dear darling, why could you not be more No, that's uh, good. I mean, not that we don't really, you know, we did together. But, you know, I was in a mask off the door. That's okay. Because I went to uh, talk with you, right? When I saw you on uh, Facebook, mm-hmm. and I saw you on my phone, I said, I need to uh, get to know you and, and spread the word. Um, we're, we're living in a, we're living in a closed scenario today, as you can see. Yeah. And, um, I'm not sure, you know, where this whole thing is going, but one thing we definitely have to know is that whatever, whatever we're working on, and whatever the things that we are doing tonight, at this moment in time, this is a worldwide thing. This is something that that worldwide. This is not uh, a political scenario. This is a medical scenario that the world is shaping today. And I think that the seriousness of the where we may get to a place where we won't have the freedom that we've had. You know, um, I'm a senior, my wife, senior, we just, uh, uh, you know, to our children, to our uh, working people, but, but being, but being, but being, but being in this period of time, I think what we have to uh, take into consideration that if we cannot go out, if we cannot go out, something is going on. Mm-hmm. And it's, of course, the sickness that this virus that, that has come into play, we don't know where this virus is going in terms of, of, whether, of whether or not it's going to come to an end. We have no idea, but one thing that we better be very, very much on top of, and that is God. Yes. We gotta be on top of that idea where 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 we're at, where the things of the Lord are concerned. <laughs> so they they. The, um, the point that I want to make before I get off the line with you is music, which is very important, and where my life is concerned, but also as a minister as well, a man who has found God in his life, it is important that, I, that people know yeah. We are not there, and we are not there. If I come to grips with the idea that if we're not taking God serious, yeah. we're do it now. Because this scenario where it's a medical issue, it has nothing to do with money, it has nothing to do with uh, politics, it has only to do with our health, where people can't even go out of the house. I'm a senior, of course, mm-hmm. and they're saying senior got to stay in, and they're shutting down stores. You can't go 
workshop, you know, the candidates are socialized. Well, who knows how long this is going to last? Personally, I have um, noticed that things are, have gotten over a period of time, over the eight years that I've been here, things are gradually, gradually getting worse and worse and worse. Mm -hmm. It's hatred, it's a disconnection, and now we're really disconnected from even family because you can't socialize, you can't, it, 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 it's unhealthy to come near people, they're saying you can't got to stay six feet from people, you can't hug them, you can't kiss them on longer. So we're at the end time. The scripture lets us know that the reason why Jesus went to the cross and God said, God so the world that he gave him so many begotten signs. I mean, this is one of it's so important because he said God so loved the world. It, it, it's an unconditional love. That's what God wants us to have for each other. Unconditional, unconditional love. It didn't say anything, but if you love what I'm going to do for you, and you become a lover of Jesus Christ, then you will be saved. Saved from what? From what we're face, facing right now. Stuff in the world. Air health. Crime. Mistrust. Killing. And have eternal life. But if we don't accept this reality that Jesus is the one that's going to bring us into heaven, when we accept him as our personal Lord and Savior, we're in big trouble. And we're seeing it now. This thing is coming to an end. Yeah. That's the way it looks. I mean, news, the news people, they don't have no answers. Yeah. They don't have any answers. All they can say is that, hey, look, hopefully, uh, you know, uh, People that are in control, you know, the president and people in, you know, China and different places where uh, this, 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 uh, this, this medical issue is happening, all they can do is hope to try to find a cure. That's, it, it, it's in, absolutely insane. At this point in time, a medical scenario has broken out and they don't even know how to cure it. So it's only, the only thing that we can do now God. Oh, so much left. Can't be no joking around with it. It can't be taken for granted. Churches are closed. The churches are, churches in my area all closed because they can't have they can't handle crowds over ten people, fifty people, whatever you say. It is something is going down the way God has said, okay. He's looking at us, looking at the world, looking at us to, 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 to get us to See, he wants to know who is really believe in Jesus Christ as a person would say. Because that's what we got to work with. God's the love world that gave his only begotten son. This is his only begotten son that, who, that whosoever believes shall what? Have eternal life. Yeah. In Christ. That's what this lifetime thing is about today. Do you want to go to hell or do you want to go to heaven? Hell, each, each, both of these places are forever. Hell is forever and heaven is forever. I'd rather go to heaven. I'd rather tell people as many as I can the importance of believing in Jesus Christ so that you can have eternal life in heaven as opposed to going to hell. Make any sense? Yes, it does. I hope... Um, I really hope that this reaches people who have been trying to figure out where they're at in life. I mean, you know, whatever field you're in, I keep saying this over again, over and over again, your vocation is fine. Whatever you do, you're a doctor, you're a teacher, you're a lawyer, you know, you're a politician, uh, you hold great position. But the most important thing is where are you going to go? If you die, or before you die, and when this world comes to an end, this world is going to come to an end. Because the only thing that's going to exist after that is heaven and hell. Heaven is the beauty of living with God for eternity, and hell is, 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 the, is the, the sad part of, of going to a place.
place where there's eternal fire, eternal death, and not, uh, you know, um, enjoying the pleasures of heaven. Very critical. So um, I'm, I'm just not, I can't, I can't thank you enough oh. for giving me this opportunity to talk about the importance of music, how it affects me, and, and, and how important it is for me to be uh, still around to advocate where the music for kids began in 1956 with our great song, Why Do Small Love, which I'm the one that initiated the song, of course, with the help of the, of the three other boys. And then Frankie Lyman came with the group in August later when the song was over. We were already using or, or singing the song as a slow song, but when Frankie came, mm -hmm. who then became a fast song for the rest of the century. But okay. I, I'm just, uh, I'm just so so great, so grateful to have that history and to be part of that. <laughs> you know, yeah. the, 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 the funny part of it is that 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 um, the financial aspect of it. Well, you know, I'm just glad to be alive when it goes. <laughs> I'm just glad to be alive. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, I have a nice wife, I have a great family. Uh, we have nine children between us. Wow. I have grandchildren, good looking children, <laughs> great children, great grandchildren as well. And um and and, and um, I'm open to speak in churches and open to take and do some performing as well. So yeah. if everybody's interested, give me a call. Oh yes, yes, yes. There's plenty of people interested. I'm interested, but I, I don't. <laughs> hey, I definitely would love to see. You are a blessing. Oh, you're so sweet. You're a blessing. You're giving you 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 you're giving people like myself an opportunity to express themselves and to um, talk about their history and. I mean, I, I, I mean, I could hear a king drop you know, a lot of interviews that I've done. Uh, you know, people want to hear the music, the music, the music, and, you know, they ask a lot of questions, and sometimes they don't realize the importance of certain individuals, people like myself that have a, have a big picture look on life, leaving, not leaving out what they've accomplished, but including God, because Listen, I can't, I can't see, I can't see no other way. Yeah. I cannot see no other way. I can't see no other way. You know, poor Adam and Eve, you know, they messed up in the garden. <laughs> Jesus said, I got to do something about this because they've messed up the world. Yeah. And over a period of time, the world is, is diminished to nothing. We, 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 we can't even go out now. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. And it, 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 is, it is sad, but it, it, it's a blessing to have people like Miss Hines, who has given people like Jimmy Merton an opportunity <laughs> to run his mouth. <laughs> well, it is a podcast, and it is FCC free. So, oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, it means people like you. Oh, well, and thank you. Oh, you, you're you're so awesome. sweet. Thank you so, so much. And when I saw his face when I picked up my phone, I said, wow, <laughs> you know, and then, I, you know, and then when you saw my name, you, you almost fell out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 I went a little crazy. <laughs> yeah, you went a little crazy. Said, well, there's people actually, they're actually uh, saying that uh, um, his name is Alf, I can't pronounce his name, Alpha. Man, uh, he said he's talking facts, though, and Pinmaster X um, wants to say, better is little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble uh, therewith, Proverbs fifteen sixteen. So, people Proverbs are... Proverbs what? Proverbs what? Uh, 15, 16. That's powerful. Yeah. Proverbs 15, 16, that is a powerful proverb. Yeah. That it, 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 you know, that's what it's really all about. Yeah, that, that's what it's all about. I mean, you know, there's Jesus being followed two thousand years ago to a place called Jerusalem, drawn by people, drawn, and then then he gets in front of the people and he says, "The world is going to 
we shut down. This is the end. If, if I go to the cross, in other words, he's going to go to be crucified. Um, if I, now the world's going to be shut down. Now he says, if I, in other words, he's the only one. You know, the only one. Of course, we, the, the, the people have come up with all types of religion. God bless them all. But Jesus said, if I, if I be lifted up, I will draw all the men unto myself. That's in, I think, John, maybe 12 chapters. And that, that's the beginning of it all. And he said that, the, you know, the world is being closed down. So um, 2,000 years later, we can't even, we can't, we can't even go outside our own stomach. Yeah. It, 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 you know, I don't know of anything in terms of any improvement except that God is giving us time to find him and find Jesus Christ and to love each other and pray for each other and pray for each other that we all come to grips with where we're at today and ask God what do I need to do to make it to heaven? That's the question on the God. What, what do I need to do to make it to heaven? I, I live with my family, I live with my family, my wife, my children, uh, I'm not married, well, I, I, I'm in a, I'm in a, I'm in a, uh, uh, a place where maybe it should not be, alcohol, drugs, or even if I'm in church, a lot of people in church don't even really realize that we're in the times of something called the end time. Mm -hmm. The end times. And, 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 and we just all need to basically just put our heads down and look up and go to God and say, Lord, I hear this story. It's, it sounds so realistic as to where we are today. How do I make it into eternity? Because that's where I really know I should be, not in heaven. Because when he said, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever shall believe, that's the key word, believe. Whoever shall believe shall not perish, yeah. but have everlasting life. So there's nothing promised except believing. In Jesus Christ. So those of you that out there that believe that you should have this and that and the other, and that Jesus should do this and God should do that, that's not what your God promised. What God is promising you is eternity in heaven if you believe that Jesus Christ did come down for you, folks. Bottom line, that is it. Not no big Cadillac, big home, a castle. And Bunches of money. It's about believing in Jesus Christ as a personal and faith. That is it. Yeah. So. And everything else, well, you raise the money and buy yourself a home. You work and buy a car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we have about uh, two minutes left. Um, do you have some words uh, you want to say before we get into our last song? I'm going to play your ballad version before we get out of here. Okay, I will pray. Okay. For those who are on the air. Okay. Dear Father God, I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity with this sister, this eyes. I thank you, Father, for giving her the inspiration to accept me in this conversation that we had. I take this final opportunity with her on the air to thank you for Jesus Christ. And I pray that all those that are listening right now, that hear this conversation, turn to you, and you hear their hearts, and instruct them and guide them into accepting Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior by simply believing and saying, yes, I accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. In the blessed name of Jesus, I do pray. Amen. Amen. So thank you so much for calling. We definitely would love to have you back. Um, but we got to go. Our final minutes here. Okay, God bless you. And, uh, contact me. Try messaging me. And you, you'll figure out how to contact me. We'll, get, we'll, we'll, we'll be in touch. Sure will. Bye. Now here comes rock and roll coming up on the set. We got this set up. 
you want to write a ballot. Thank you for calling. Going like this. Why? Uh, no. <laughs> Hello? I can't hear you that well because it's still the mode on being on air. Um, I'll text you um, from Devon's account. Is that okay? No, no, but I'll I'll text you on Devon's account. All right, bye. Bye. Thank you so much, everybody. This was an awesome experience today. Good luck and have an awesome night. Bye. We can't save that one. It wasn't an HD. Dang. Hey, I'll talk to you guys soon.